took on a rugby player and I've got this massive bruise to show for it. Hey there my wee Scottish Kelpies, it's Walter here bringing you another vlog and today we have a story time video. First of all, I want to preface this video by saying that I am an incredibly privileged person, I'm very lucky, I have lots to be thankful for and I, like, I've got food on the table, there are people out there in way worse positions than me. So I don't want this to feel like a, oh, pity me video, I've had such a bad few weeks, like, that's not what this is. Um, actually, I learned a lot from the last few weeks. To my Patreons who already had this video last week, hi, hello, thank you still for supporting this awful mess. They had the video and I had the big bruise on my face, which was, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. I just want to explain like why I've not really been alert around much and what's been happening with the last few weeks, where I am just now and a little bit of insight into things kind of going forward. So you know what to expect from the channel and where things are going and, and what's going on. Where do you even start? So I know a lot of you that follow me on social media will have been keeping up with a lot of it and some of this will probably not be news to you as this is just the video format of what you already know. About a month ago-ish, I think, a few things started happening. Number one, my car's MOT was due. So it was at the start of kind of September time, I put my car into the garage for its MOT. Now I know that MOTs don't exist everywhere in the world and I think there are different versions throughout America because we heard some people saying in America, like USA, that they have it in their states and other people saying that they don't. But an MOT here in the UK is basically every year is if your car is over the age of three years old, your car gets checked top to bottom. They check everything to make sure this thing is fit for the road. Tires, lights, like the internal parts, the springs, the brakes, they check everything about your car. And then they charge you a fortune to fix all the little things. So for example, you cannot pass your MOT if you do not have all your lights working. You cannot pass an MOT if your brake pads are worn down. You cannot pass an MOT if you've got a tire puncture. Like they'll do, they'll assess it all, then they call you up and they go, yeah, it's failed, and then they tell you how much it's gonna to be to fix it. That's effectively what an MOT is. So a lot of people wait for their cars to get repaired when it's due to go in for its MOT anyway because they can get the repair and the MOT all done together, which costs a bomb. Anyway, so my car was due for its MOT. I knew it would fail. My car is now, the car itself is seven years old. I've had it for five years. And it's gotten to that, that point now where I know it's going to fail each year and it's usually going to be on something. So I set money aside, not a problem. So my car goes into the garage. Now my car, ever since I got it, has always had an on tire pressure light, tire pressure sensor light. It's always been on. I've never been able to get it off. Now the garage where I bought it from, which is Arnold Clark through in Edinburgh, I took it back to them when I first got it. That's like, that's like a 40 minute drive. Well, yeah, 40 minute drive kind of from where I am. And they were like, yeah, we fixed it, we reset it for you. And then like a day later it came back on. I didn't have the time to keep taking it back to that garage, right? So I was like, look, the tire pressure is fine. There's nothing wrong with the tire pressures, it'll be fine. Anyway, it was fine and the car passed its MOT most of the other times. However, legislation had recently changed and now your car cannot pass with the tire pressure light on, even if there's nothing wrong with your tire pressures. So car goes into the first garage and the garage calls me up and they're like hey we can't work out why this tire pressure light is on we've tried everything to reset it and then they were like we could put four new sensors on and see if that'll fix it um or three sorry three were needing done they were like we could put these on and try it and see if that'll work but that's like 90 pound a sensor which is a lot of money so i think all in it was going to cost me like for that fitting blah 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 360 something pounds and I was like, well, what can you do? It can't pass its MOT unless it's done. So I let them do it and then they called me back up and they were like, look, that didn't pass it. Like it didn't work. So we're not gonna charge you for them. We've taken them off, bless them. They took them off, but they left them in my car for me to have for free because they couldn't use them again on another model, but they didn't charge me for them. This is farmer's auto care in the UK, by the way, for anybody that, like I have never been ripped off by these guys. They've always been so good. So I really want to just give them a massive shout out. Like they were amazing with me. And Peter at the branch that I was at, if you ever watch this video, Peter, huge shout out to you. Thank you. He was like, we can't work out what it is. You're going to have to take it into the manufacturing garage. So I take my car to the manu, well, I first of all take it to a friend's, a family friend's garage to make sure. And they say all the same things that the Farmer Auto Care garage said, which I figured it would be, I knew it was just gonna be a long shot. I was kind of hoping they could just like turn the light off and pass it, but they wouldn't do that for me either, which is fair. You know, it's their garage, it's their livelihood. So anyway, uh, I take it to the manufacturing garage and pop it in. All the while this is going on, by the way, work for me has picked up. Now I work, 
can't give any details away because it's all still NDA. I'm under an NDA right now, so I have to be very careful about what I say. Let's just say that something was coming, a big thing was happening in the business, right? And it's still under NDA. Um, and I'm not even, I can't even tell you the date of when that lifts. Like, I can't tell you anything. So this is gonna be very vague, but just stick with me on it. Um, we had to, because we're responsible for the training of said thing, like the training surrounding it, and it is a shit ton of training. Like, I'm not even talking like, there is a team of like, technically a team of six of us, and then like a few others behind the scenes that we had to pass things to, but there was a team of six of us to put together training for thousands of people. Thousands of people, and 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 the dates that they gave us were ridiculous. They were ridic these were ridiculous timelines. Like these were insane to get all that work done, and and it effectively involved us having to go through packs of like 50 page documents, extracting what was relevant, and putting that into an easy to digest format before sending it off to the back office team, who then printed it and put all the the graphics and things on it. But that was our job. We had to do that, and we had like two three weeks to get this done. <laughs> Thousands of people, big thing, huge compliance, every, 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 but it's huge, right? I can't begin to tell you how big this was. So we're working after work, we're working through our breaks, we're working at the weekends, that's why I've not been putting up a lot of videos. And all the while the garage is calling me up that I've put my car into going, yeah, we can't work out, oh, we think it's a puncture. And I'm like, it's not a fucking puncture, trust me, because the other two garages would have picked up, well, we think it is, okay, well, you do what you think it is then. Um, That's another thing. <laughs> the blinds, regardless of the super glue, decide that they just want to come down. I'll deal with that later. That's because of the energy I'm emitting right now. It's like, see when you're in the house and you're scared, things start happening because your energy that you're emitting is causing things to happen around you. My frustrational energy just caused that to fall. That's what's going on. This is what happens when you have negative energy. So we're gonna lift it up and I'm gonna try and make it a lot happier. Um, so that the rest of it doesn't fall down. That's how it works. So <laughs> so anyway, this garage, call me up, call me up, call me up, right? And I'm like, I don't have the time to be on the phone to you guys right now. I've got so much stuff going on. Like I just don't have the time. This is the Arnold Clark Vauxhall garage, by the way. This is, and their engineers can't figure out for the life of them what is wrong with my car. And then it got to a point where they were like, well, we think it's the sensors. And I was like, well, I don't think it is because the other garage tried that. I need to smile, cause it'll fall down. <laughs> um, the other garage tried that. I was like, so it's not the sensors, what else could it be? And they were like, well, it could be the TPS system, but we recommend the sensors. And I was like, well, I'm not paying you 400 pounds for something that I know that it's not. So let's try the TPS system. So they change out the TPS system, 300 odd quid. That didn't work. They were like, well, we noticed you had those sensors sitting in your car, so we tried putting them on to see if that would fix. And I think at this point they were starting to understand this is a this isn't this isn't normal. Like this isn't how this car is built. Like this is this was now above their heads. And then they were like, well, we can keep trying to diagnose it, you know, but it's gonna cost you ninety pounds an hour or whatever for. And this is like it was like a few days in the garage. I was like, are you serious? And I was like, I couldn't next to that and work stress. I just couldn't. I couldn't be dealing with it. So as anybody does, I rant to mum. And mum is like, give me the garage's name, number, and give me your license plate number, and I'll get it sorted. Mothers are like that, aren't they? They've got like a kind of superpower that they just swing in. Like, I, honestly, I don't know how they do it. They just, they just are like, they just like are like super man, super woman. They just swing in and fix it. I don't know why, but anyway, I was like, could you please? Like, I very rarely rely on my mother for things because she's got so much on and, you know, I don't want to be a burden to her, even although I know she loves me and she doesn't see it that way. But at this point, I was like, I was so stressed with everything. I just need mum. I was like, I need mum. Mum, please help. So she she took it over and she was on and off the phone with them. And thank, like, she was not texting me throughout the day about it. She was just dealing with it. And it was me that was having to chase her up for updates because she, she knew that I was on and off calls and I had so much work to get done. So very respectful. And I do love my mum very much for it. Um, my mum was the one that figured out what was wrong with the car. Not the manufacturing garage, but she did uh, play her cards very well with them where she was like, yeah, well, you guys are like the experts. So if you can't figure out what's wrong with it, how bad does that look for you guys? She played that so well. Like she was, and then she was off and on all these Google searches, all these different forums trying to figure out 
what is this? What is causing this issue? Anyway, she gets to the bottom of it. Apparently, my car is not wired the same way a lot of the regular models are, um, where it, it, the tire pressure sensors don't pick up the tire pressure, they pick up the speed that the tire moves at. I don't know, it's all that, and then it attaches itself to an AP something unit, another different unit, not the TPA system, and, and like, there was something about the way that this car was set up, that any time you change the tyre, if a tyre gets changed, you have to reset it a very specific way, which this manufacturing garage that made the car didn't know. I'd like to just preface that. So my mum tells them this on the phone, and then the next again, day later, miraculously, my car is fixed. And lo and behold, what does it say on the on the documentation that I get? Like the, the price, I'll put up the price here, you'll see it. Because the first garage of Farmers Auto Care fixed lights and tires and things. Um, and they charge me like just shy two, uh, just shy 300 pounds for that. And then this garage bills me 800 odd pounds. And it's like they had to reset the system. Which was information that my mother gave them. So I can see on the matter. Anyway, as all this is going on and as my work is like manic, like we're all working so bloody hard, <laughs> my tooth, my wisdom tooth was causing me issues. Cause you know, it comes in threes, as they say. And I was doing my best to ignore it cause I just didn't have the time to be, I had enough going on, I didn't have time. I knew it had been growing through, but it started to shred the back of my mouth. I think a lot of people have probably had this happen to them at some point where you've put off something painful long enough the pain just becomes a constant. You don't actually notice that you're in pain until it hits a peak. Anyway, that's what was happening to me with this tooth. And then it was one sleepless night and and I was just like, I was ready to break down at that point because it was like the Thursday before and I got my car back on a Friday. So this was before I had confirmation my car was fixed. This was in the middle of the height of like all the stuff. I had the deadline to meet that Monday and I knew I was gonna be working through the weekend. And it was just like, there was so much stuff happening. And this wisdom tooth was like, hello, hello Jackie, if you know the TikTok trend. And honestly, it was, oh, it was dire. I had a sleep, completely sleepless night. I think I maybe got one hour sleep. Um, and it was just, it was awful. I hated it. It was so bad. And I don't function well on low sleep. Any of my family and friends know me will tell you I don't do well with little to no sleep. So I was in a foul mood. I had to sit there and I was like calling around all the dentists to try to get an appointment whilst working, whilst stressing out about the car. And the dentists were like, can't see until the 7th of October. The 7th of October? A lot of dentists still aren't even taking new patients. And I was like, are you kidding? And they were like, mm, no, not really. So I was like, God. So I had another sleepless night. And, and then my anxiety hit because I was so tired and exhausted. My anxiety, I couldn't keep the damn back of the anxiety attacks. They just started breaking through and it was awful. It was a horrible night. And the next day I was like, wait a minute, I have... I have dental insurance through my work. So I called up the dentist insurance and by this point I was in tears down the phone. I was just crying. And, and the poor girls, Emma, uh, Emma and Louise from Dentaplan in the UK were like, don't you worry, like, you know, and I was like, I suffer really bad dentist anxiety too. <laughs> and they were like, don't you worry, we're gonna look after you, we're gonna do everything we can, like, please don't stress out, please don't cry. Emma, you know, it was Louise explained loads of stuff to me and she was like, oh, we also do this, like, this thing online where if you get de bad dentist anxiety, like, you can go and you can call this number, it's 24 seven and they'll, talk, they'll help talk you down. And I was like, that's so cool that they offer that service. Anyway, she would, and then she was like, I need to pass you to my colleague who will deal with these emergency appointments. So she passes me through and that's where I get Emma. And Emma's like, cool, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go and call round a bunch, see if I can't get you a much sooner appointment. You just go and deal with your work. Cause she knew I had that going on. She was like, you go deal with your work. I was like, very cool. And then, and then, oh wait, I'd just gotten the car back by this point. Like I had just gotten the car back as this started to really flare up. And, and uh, the car was sitting there and I was like, thank God, at least that's one thing sorted. And she was like, right, you go and deal with your work. I'll go and call around the dentist. So she calls around and then she calls me back. And she's like, I know you're working and I know you're really busy, but um, I could get your appointment in Bathgate in like 30 minutes. And I was like, seriously? She was like, like, if it's not good enough for you, that's totally cool, like, I'll try again. I was like, no, 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 I'm fucking taking it. Cause I didn't think this was gonna be to get the tooth out. I thought I needed to get put on a waiting list to get my tooth taken out. So I was like, emergency appointment, 80 pounds, cause you do have to pay for it. 
and then they refund you back through your dental insurance. But dental stuff here in the UK, if you're out of school age, you do have to pay for, but not nearly as much as the USA. Anyway, she was like, I'll text you the details, but you're gonna have to head pretty much straight there. She sent me through the details. It was Bathgate uh, Dental Practice. It was Dr. Waddle. Massive shout out, don't think you'll ever see this, but massive shout out. And so went, sat in the chair, freaking myself out, because I hate the dentist. And he was so nice, big massive like, rugby player guy walks in, huge guy, and he was like, didn't you worry him, didn't you worry, honestly, you'll be fine with me. So he's, I saw his little badge thing outside of his office, or outside the office building, and it had said that he'd been a dentist since 1998. He was like, didn't you worry him, and then he looks in my mouth and he's like, oh hen, you look like you're in a lot of pain, I was like, I am. <laughs> And he was like, does it hurt here, and here, and here, and he's poking around all my teeth, and I'm like, yes, 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 and he's like, yeah, he's like, look, I think we should take it out, he was like, obviously the decision's up to you, and I was like, wait, can you, like, take it out today, and he was like, I've got the time, hen, you're down for, like, another half an hour, you, you know, it's completely up to you, and I was like, I was not prepared to make that decision, I was so emotional, I was exhausted, I was just, like, so anxious, freaking myself out, and I was like, I can't do another sleepless night. Get it out of my mouth. And he was like, I'll have that out your mouth in no seconds. Like, so anyway, there was one bit we struggled to numb with the local anaesthetic. So for anybody squeamish, just, I'll, I'll, I'll be as vague as possible. The injections go in, the first, I think it does about three or four, then I need another two, then I need another two on top of that. Because there was one area that we just couldn't get numb and it was like right up in the back. But on the on the second try of him going in and wiggling it to see if there was pain, it was like, I know exactly where it is, hen. And he gets his needle and he goes in and then as soon as he sticks the needle in, I was like, <gasps> and he was like, got it, yeah, that's it, we've got it now. So we're waiting for the local anaesthetic to kick in. And he's talking to me about Pokemon and rugby and like they're just, him and his assistant who, she was lovely as well, were blathering away nonsense and stuff and it just took my mind off it. And then he went and he gave it a, like, a little wiggle and he was like, right, cool coming out now and he had that tooth out of my mouth in 30 seconds like he had it he had, you just went I'm not going to go into detail of the noises and stuff it was not a pleasant experience as you can imagine but he had that out of my mouth fast right and then he was like one last wee bit one last wee bit in out and he was like you're done you're done that's it you're done and I was like I couldn't believe how fast that was anyway he was phenomenal I left him a fantastic review I had a terrible terrible experience with another practice in in Livingston and uh, I'm not going to name them but they were like, they were so horrible. And then they had this like, like apparently I had left them a bad review. I'd left them a bad review on Google Maps. And apparently that was me slandering and defaming them. So they sent me this letter that was like, yeah, we're removing you from our records because of the slander and defaming, defamination or whatever it was it said, right? Uh, and wait a minute, actually I've got the letter. Oh, here we go. Right. They said, following on from your recent contact with the practice, we regret to inform you that we are unable to retain you as a patient at this dental practice as you refused to adhere to our cancellation prof, uh, policy and furthermore made slanderous and defamatory comments on social media platforms against the practice. Didn't realise that leaving a bad two star Google review, it was two stars, it wasn't even one, uh, was slanderous and defamatory. Let me take you back a little bit to talk about that, right? Three years ago, really stressed with work, going through a lot, had some money worries. Um, and it was not long after I'd got this place and I'd moved in and the dentist practice that I was registered with sent me a 24 hour notification reminder of my appointment and then when I called them up and I was like, hey, I can't make it, can I move it? They charged me a £10 fee for moving it. I was like, well, why didn't you like remind me of the appointment sooner than that? Like you would think that maybe 48 hours you would send a text or something, right? And they're like, well, that's just not our policy which is bullshit because I've currently registered with a new dentist practice and they've sent me an email a week before my appointment. An email a week before, so I've got plenty of time to reschedule the appointment. So I explained to them that I wasn't happy down the phone and the receptionist was awful. She was just, she had no empathy skills whatsoever and she riled me up even more to the point I was like, do you know what, just cancel me. Like I don't even want to be part of it. I can't even put up with this. So I left them a two star Google review and was like, their, their dentists are good, but their, their receptionist staff lack any empathy skills whatsoever. But they kept me on record after that for like two, three years until I needed an appointment. So I called up Chalmers and they were like, we can't take you because you're registered somewhere else. So you have to call where you're registered. And the girl, the nurse that was on the phone was strict, but like she's, she had people skills. She was just like, that's just a policy hen, but if they give you stick, you call me right back up and I will phone them on your behalf. You just let me know. She was one of those nurses. 
Do you know one of those nurses that you just don't mess with? And I was like, right, okay, okay. I called the dental practice back up again and I was like, Can I need to get an appointment for you guys because they won't take me. And they were like, eh, no, because you left us a two-star review, so we're not taking you. Um, we're going to cancel you down. And I was like, okay. So I called up Chalmers again and they were like, is that them just cancelling you? She was like, that's shocking because if they've had you registered, they're getting money from the NHS per month of each patient they have registered at their practice. So if that's them only just now cancelling you, they've been getting money for you this whole two or three years. And then that practice had the audacity to send me that letter where they were like, because you made slanderous and defamatory comments to us. Uh, about us and and I would like to just preface this by saying I deleted that uh, review a few about four months back I think it was now something like that when Gmail sent me a, a notification to say it had so many reviews like it reminded me I'd even put a review there and I went on and I was like um maybe it was just me having a bad day like I'll take it off wish I hadn't but anyway I left them a nice one star review this time and um that was fun and I was like yeah I was like Slanderous and defamatory comments. Okay, number one, it's only defamatory if it's untrue. What I said was completely true. So it's not defamatory. This is them just sending a letter to try and like intimidate and sound really like authoritative. They don't have a clue what they're saying. Um, and slanderous, I was just stating fact, which I did in my next review when I gave them a one star. Um, and then I'll, I'll preface this by saying I left the bank, uh, I left the bathgate dental practice a lovely five star review uh, for their care and consideration. So um, it's really interesting actually because looking at this practice, I'm not going to name them out, very tempted. I was like um, looking through their other comments and all their other complaints are one star and two star reviews are all about their receptionist staff as well. And the practice keep coming back with, well it's not our fault, it's not our fault. And all the replies are like, well it's your fault, it's your fault, it's your fault. Maybe you need to look at your receptionist staff because I don't think he's actually trained them and that's not their fault if they're not getting proper empathy training. Take it from somebody who trains contact center staff for working on the phone to have empathy skills. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So after they sent, I would have been fine had they not sent me that letter. But when they sent me that letter, I was like, oh ho ho. Oh, 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 okay then, okay. And I was like, and furthermore, I have a YouTube channel with like over 70,000 subscribers. If I wanted to slander you on social media, trust me, you'd know about it. <laughs> I think that was like one of the things I'd put in it. I was like, you'd know, you'd know if I really wanted to do that because I fucking would. But I don't want to cause any bullying or anything like that. Anybody, you should feel entitled to, as a customer, if you've had a poor experience, you are legally allowed to leave a one star review on Google Maps. I just want to tell you that right now, you're allowed to do it. As long as you're not calling people like really horrific names, you're fine. You're absolutely fine. So anyway, I wonder if they've replied to that review actually, because they replied to my old one saying it was my fault. So let's see, um, they've not. They've not replied. I didn't, yeah. They're best to just, they're best to just not. So we'll, we'll see. I may get a letter through my door saying you've been summoned to court over defamation. <laughs> that would be fun. That would be very interesting. But like you're, you're allowed to make, you're allowed to leave a one star review somewhere. Don't ever feel like you're not allowed to do that. But what I would preface that by saying is that if you have a really good experience somewhere, make sure you review them on Google Maps especially if it's a small business or something, even big businesses, doesn't matter because I feel like sometimes the, the smaller, sometimes the, the complaints can be louder but if you've had a really good review, a really good experience somewhere, make sure you leave them that five star review and if you've had poor experiences, you are allowed, don't ever let a company bully you into silence like what they tried to do. Anyway, tooth out. Big black bruise started forming a few days later. He like told me how to look after it and everything like that. And, and pain gone. Like the thing is, is that I didn't, I, I barely had to take any pain medication for it because I didn't realize that, see the pain of having a tooth ripped out your mouth like once the local anesthetic wears off. Anesthetic, anesthesia, anesthetic. You just know what I mean, you just know what I mean. Once that wears off, I didn't realize I was actually in less pain with having have that ripped out my mouth than I was dealing with as a base level before it, honestly. So even although the bruise looks graphic, 
I wanted to like create the story of like, yeah, I got in like a fist fight with this big rugby player, like I took on a rugby player. Like I wanted to preface it by that, but actually the guy was lovely. And Dr. Waddle, if you do ever watch this video, massive thank you. Seriously, really cannot thank you enough for what you did. Anyway, right, that is my story time, guys. That's where I am. My Comic Con Scotland got cancelled. The one thing that I was looking forward to next weekend that I was really excited about going to because I get to meet and see some of you guys when I'm there got cancelled. Gutted because I had friends coming everywhere for it. So, but next weekend, my friend Ruby is still coming up from London, and my friend Nomi from up north is still coming down. She's my fellow podcast host on the Bleach podcast that we do together. Um, they're still coming to mind. We're gonna have like a girly weekend, so there's probably not gonna be a video up next weekend. However, some of our endeavours and some of what we do next weekend, I'll probably try and record because we're gonna go to Stirling Castle. I've got a surprise book for them that I would love to tell you guys, but I can't, but something in Edinburgh is very geeky. But yeah, I've got some stuff there that I'm really excited to, to try and film and get some content from. So uh, the video after that will hopefully be a bit of that. I also have a quiz that I've done with a bunch of people, a bunch of friends that came around a Scottish quiz that I need to get up at some point too. So I have got videos sitting there ready to go, but just, it's been manic. And work is still really busy, but it has settled a little, uh, just a little, not much, just a little. Oh, and we had like the work thing, somebody broke the NDA, that was a whole thing. Oh, it was, anyway, it's been, it's been manic, guys. Like, I can't even, I can't even go into, I can't even go into detail about how much work that broken NDA caused the rest of us, but like, just know that it's been manic with me recently. But again, very thankful for everything that I've got. I mean, I got that tooth taken out for 80 pounds. Car costed me over a grand, which is why I'm behind on the Patreon boxes and things, which are, all the boxes are there. There's a few, I want to wait till I go to Sterling now because I want to pick something up from Sterling. Every time I go to get ready to send the boxes out, I'm like, but I want to do this, I want to add that. And it's just not, it's not going well. So, um, <laughs> but anyway, that's all I've got for this video, guys. Honestly, if you made it this far, if you made it this far, I feel like you have to put something in your comments. Like, if you made it this far into the video, if you watched all of this, I want you to put the word, um, what was the first thing I ate when I... I want you to put soup in your comment. Put soup in your comment if you made it this far. I'm very impressed. And, uh, and I will see you next week. Week after. <laughs> with another vlog. And until then, haste you back, guys. <laughs>